Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. You guys remember this uh, 2006 Ford Mustang GT with a 4.6 V8 two valve, don't you? I'm developing quite, of a, well, quite a relationship and a little bit of history with this uh, particular car. Once upon a time, uh, when I first saw this vehicle, it showed up with some trouble codes and it was running super lean on bank one. We had a P0171 trouble code and I believe the other trouble code that was focused on on the first visit was a P2096. Uh, loosely the definition was is the bank one upstream O2 sensor was stuck in a lean condition. Um, I was actually able to verify that a few months ago. I added a fuel source to it. We made a whole video about that diet process. Uh, we had found that somebody had installed an Amazon style uh, O2 sensor. Uh, we ended up uh, tossing in a Motorcraft O2 sensor and that had solved and brought the fuel trims back into line and we shipped it on about its business. Well, it came back and it came back and I had, uh, I had an EVAP system leak. I fixed up the EVAP leak. Uh, the problem was is the engine was still trending uh, into a lean condition, but only under certain circumstances. Uh, let me hop into hop into the vehicle real quick. We're gonna fire this up and I'm gonna pull up fuel trims and I'll show you the uh, the instance in which we start to lean out over here on bank one, okay? Now we can see we've got some uh, Diag cart and some laptop connected here, but uh, I'm gonna disconnect uh, this BCM and I'm just gonna plug in the snap-on scanning device just so, uh, powering on, beep just so uh, we can get a quick snapshot of those fuel trims. So we're keyed on. Let me uh, start things the engine real quick, fire it up. Oh, by the way, this particular Mustang has 51,440 miles. 440.4 miles on the odometer. Very low mileage. All right, so we're pulling up some data here. I'm gonna go into fuel trim. So we wanna see data display, continue. All right, next up, we're gonna go into fuel and O2 sense, sensor data. That's gonna give us our fuel trim values. And uh, I'll show you guys uh, the conditions in which this thing starts to run lean. Um, yeah, there's a good possibility that what I did before with that O2 sensor didn't fix it. Uh, and like I said, it ran for a while and we thought it did, but perhaps I was just masking uh, the, uh, the actual problem here. I don't know. We're gonna find out. All right, follow my finger here. We've got long-term fuel trims. That's bank one, FT1. Bank two, that's FT2, and that's percentage. We've got four and 5%, so we're gonna see these numbers cap out, I think at like 25, 26, 27. They won't go any higher, plus or minus negative. Now we have our short-term fuel trims, bank one and bank two, and those are both hanging out at a negative. So on the short-term side, the ECM's trying to pull away fuel uh, for the immediate moment. On the long-term side, it's trending to add fuel. So what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna give this a little bit of throttle. Idle it up, right around two grand. And here's our problem. As we come into load, bank one starts to climb. Look at that, 19. Now our short terms are trying to counteract that. But the long-term fuel trim is trying to add fuel. Short term is trying to pull fuel away doesn't make any sense. I'm actually a little bit stumped on this. Uh, I spent a lot of time diagnosing the thing and I had to phone a friend and call in some assistance, hence the laptop, which happens to be a Ford laptop. And that laptop belongs to A-Rod from Power Stroke Tech Talk with A-Rod. A-Rod, say hi. Yo, what's going on? Yeah, he flew in all the way from Detroit just to help me diagnose the Mustang. That's how bad I suck at my job. How about that? All right, so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna disconnect my snappy snap-on. We're going to reconnect the uh, the Motocraft version of the scan tool, and we're gonna get into 4Scan here. I think it's 4Scan. Is it 4Scan we're using? IDS. IDS, we're using Ford's IDS. And that's basically Ford's diagnostic uh, software for their equipment. Uh, mine is generic aftermarket. This is OEM dealership level. They're similar, but different. Kind of like our sunglasses. They're similar, they're, they're similar but, different. but different, yeah. Of the oxygen sensors like that. Being able that, to see it graph, that's a much faster baud rate. I than, mean, I can change the, like, uh, you know, let's say I'll, I'll select this oxygen sensor and change 
the graph so it's a number like you have it. So I would much rather see this over, you know, three seconds worth of time than see this you stuck have to at watch it. the yeah. voltage yet. I can graph with mine, but it's not that responsive. And you have to select and build the graph. It's not as intuitive as, uh, as IDS appears to be. So let's go here. Let's go here. Can we control our if we can? Those are all your data pits, aren't they? Yep. So anything with the pound sign, we got a pound sign here. Hashtag. We, uh, ha we, got a, <laughs> we got a pound sign here. These are all things we can take active command on. So we're gonna control the RPM. We can control the EVAT canister purge valve. We can control, uh, what else can we control? Uh, shift solenoid A, F, blank, blank, blank. All the ones with the, with the pound sign. Can okay. All right, so we've got RPM bumped up. Where'd you where'd you park it? I got it at? RPM at 1200. 1200, and just sitting here. Look how nice and tight Bank Two is. This is what we're looking for. That's bank what two. Bank One should be looking like. And Bank One is just not doing anything. That's the new Motocraft. And look, our up three mo two. Our shirt turn wasn't. Oh, it's look, it's not stuck right now. It's not moving. Yep, short term stuck. One's moving. Yeah, short term one is hanging out, not switching. Short term two now is doing what the, it should be. Now look at the reading. And it's back to life. Hmm. There we go, it drops out again. Bump it up to two grand, see what it does. It's gonna exacerbate the situation. Throttle's coming up. There's two grand. And now it's it's going to start to lean out. Yeah. 15. It's adding 15% more fuel to bank one to get this to start switching. Yep. Look at that. So look right here, in short term, is trying to take fuel away. Right now we have the problem. It's happening right now. And look, it's even trying to adjust bank two to compensate for the differentness between each bank. I mean, if you comparing bank one and bank two upstream oxygen sensors, look how nice and tight the driver side is. This passenger side, it almost seems like we have a weak oxygen sensor. All right, there's some tomfoolery going on here with this vehicle. We're gonna, hey, Cody's here. We're gonna get this thing set up on the rack real quick. We're gonna go back. Um, we're gonna talk about it in a minute. We need to revisit that O2 sensor that has been changed twice. I put one in and the other guy put one in and everything that we're looking at here is saying we have an O2 sensor problem. Where are you going with that, up on the subframe? Yeah. All right. Uh, I mean, that works too, it don't matter. So let's uh, let's set set this rack up and uh, revisit those O2s. I think we're too far forward. Okay. Yeah, I gotta roll it back on this side. Moving on up. A Rod, hit the subscribe button. Okay, we're up above the catalytic converter. There's the sensor that I installed. A Rod just unplugged it, and we're trying to find a good visual line of sight on that connector, which is the hardest Ooh. side. Zooming in, is that I see, word? I see it, I see it. All right, so we're back up top. I think we can get a better view from this <laughs> angle. There are some exposed wires down there uh, that are on the O2 sensor harness. They're not broken, but there is some bare copper. So we're gonna pull this intake off real quick like, and uh, figure out what the deal is with that circuit. Oddly enough, Aaron said it earlier, no circuit codes. Nada. I said it. Zero zip zilch nada. So let's pop this thing apart, get all the connectors off. We're about to beat the clock on this, dude. Just be careful. Don't break Brutal. that off. Yeah. I've, uh. Well, I was gonna let Aaron know, be careful of the plastic and rubber down oh, here. Oh, it's still hot. You're scared of the plastic and rubber? What you need? Hey, no, oh. I have, I got the gun here and I have uh, the sockets. I have all the stuff. 
Yeah, just be careful of plastic and rubber because uh, it will break yeah, it. I promise. It's different. Unlike Michigan, it doesn't break as much. Michigan. Oh, I need an extension. Uh, it is in in there. Yeah. You know where the tools are. Hold it into itself. You pull it down. Okay, fuel line disconnect. The uh, coils can stay in the head. Not that one. That one. I put in a personal day at like 3.30 yesterday. I didn't want to set the sight. Yeah, it's all off. I put in a personal day at 3.30. Oh, did you? Yeah. What'd they say? And Brian goes, really? Hang on, I gotta bust that fuel line loose. He goes, what's so important that you needed to take it off now? I said, it's personal. Where's Don't worry the, about uh, it. Blake for this, right? What'd he uh, say? He didn't say nothing. Probably right in front of you. I can't believe that he would say that to me. All right, fuel line's coming off. Leaking fuel, dripping fuel, spraying fuel, losing fuel. Ow! Ah, no big deal. Nah. Just let it go. Pump it. There's a fire extinguisher. It's right there. We're good. Cup the boys. Okay. Squeeze that regulator vacuum line. Injectors coming out. Ow. Yeah, this is an easy one compared to like a truck where you have to take the coils. By the way, Aaron, I lied to you. I told you this was a two valve. Oh. I know, and then I was like, I thought you told me it was a two valve. I thought I read that it was, but I was wrong. There we go. Where's the O rings? Are they all in the, in the injectors? All right. Aaron says too slow. My side, shot off. I forgot two over there. Well, I'm doing that one then. You got one in the back? Or the, the inboard? Yeah, yeah. You still like trying? I was gonna say, I thought they were captured, but you probably could just leave them in there. They are semi-captured. Oh. There's a connector on the back. Move the intake again. Okay, hold on. Yeah, put it back. Oh, come on, connector. Got it. Oh, okay, those are. Uh, that's the runner. Okay, do it again. Oh, I see. Hang on, I gotta get one more. Here you. Oh. Oh, you be careful. Oh, Slow down here. Sucks. If you don't get in the corner, just cut it down the middle. No worries. Get some PV blaster or WD and come out. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want Son of a fuck. You'd be good at that corner. Oh, in the water. Don't get Oh, gasoline. Yeah, Ray made a mess. Oh, look at my hat. Look at you. Here it is. The harness. Right. Right here. Look at that. Breaking the wire. Right there. That was the front left. We'll, uh, Right. Well, that just would chafe right there. No break in the wire. That's probably why we didn't get a circuit code. No. 
I got white with red. Gray, light blue? Yeah. Gray, All light blue. HO2 11. What are we working on? It, it looks like it's just a sensor uh, wire. Ford Master Tech. Going yeah. to the PCM. I can't get anything done oh, with these people here. The long light? The wand. The wand light. Oh, it is back here. Oh. It is in oh, there. Actually got it it's illuminating our wires. You guys see what I'm saying? I can't get anything done. All right, here is. Here is our suspected problem right here. See that? Let's uh, let's get some zooms on it and see if this is gonna work. Change our angle of our dangle here. See that? There it is. What we think was going on here is it didn't break connection number one, so we never had an open circuit code. But what we think happened is this was just rubbing around on the trans case just as things vibrated around and it was grounding out temporarily causing an incorrect signal going back to the PCM and it had no idea what to do with its fuel curves. Classic so, chase spot. Yep. So what we're gonna do is fix it, resheathe it with some loom. Oh, thanks for the lumens. And then try again. So let's cut this nasty piece out of here. Defeated by a bad wire, it's terrible. I am horrible technician. This engine's still hot too. Oh. Uh, I only had it running for like an hour. It's, we did that. Okay. This one's far. Let's strip this guy back. Raw, oh, come here, you. Hot. I got a nice hot. pistol grip. I got a Oh, I cut it short. Did you see that? I was wrong. There we go. Nice. Cool beans. Okay, so we've got the wire. Restripped, cut, copper looks good, it's not corroded. We're gonna go in here with some heat shrink splices, a piece of wire to make up for what we cut away, get this reconnected. You'll see, don't go anywhere. All right, giving it the lean here. I'm bear hugging the, uh, the engine. I've got a piece of wire coming in. We've got a heat shrink connector right here. So there's no crimping involved. It's, uh, it's just a piece of a heat shrink with some solder in the center of it. And then there's these two plastic bands and these are gonna shrink down when we heat this up. What we need to do is insert uh, the other piece of wire into this connector. It's gonna slide over that solder. And then once we heat it up, all that solder is gonna melt. It's gonna fuse the wires together and make a nice, tight, strong bond that is waterproof. And uh, it'll be better than it was when it was originally constructed. So let's get this thing in position here. Let's uh, do some focusing too. There we go. Can you guys see? Hope so. Slide that on through. Actually, I want these wires to kind of mesh together. Not doing what I wanted. Let me try one more tactic here. We're gonna mesh them together. We'll put a twist in it. There, right there. Put a little bit of a twist in it. Now we slide the connector over. Oh, don't go. No, don't do that. I almost pulled it out. I don't want to pull it out. A little farther. Come on. It's almost where I want it. Oh, I need to switch to a blue connector. This red one's too small. Stand by. Epic fail. I do have the white ones. Got the whole kit, man. I can I can solder connector anything. Yeah, there's more space on that one. That's gonna work. That red was just too small. I gotcha. So we'll take these and just kind of shove them in there. Give it a twist to clean it up. Slide our solder in over it and come on in with the heat. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah, just like 
like that. It's perfect. Just keep at it. Just go back and forth, left and right. See how it's melting those little blue bands? That's what's going to hang on. It's like glue almost. It's going to glue itself to each individual wire. And then when that solder in the middle melts off, that's going to make the connection uh, between the wires. See it wick away? See the solder going? Far superior to the plastic style crimp butt connectors, man. I'll never use those again. Is this your first go to thing, or are you using another approved method? There was once upon a time I didn't know any better, so I just used to use the blue crimps and then tape them up. It was horrible. That nope, good? that's good. So let's cut it off, strip it, and then make the connection on the other side. Okay, let's get the second connection made. So we've already stripped away the harness side. You guys see this? There's the harness side. Uh, we don't wanna shorten this wire. That way the repair wire will be uh, taking any tension. We wanna actually leave this a little bit longer. So I know you guys can't see them. Kind of marking it with my hands or my thumb. Point being, I'm gonna make this wire longer than it was. <laughs> Immediately after. <laughs> okay, let's get this next one uh, set up and ready for heat shrinkages. I'm gonna go all the way in and over. Hang on, cut that off real quick. Not yet, not yet with the heat. I hope you guys can see what I'm trying to do here. Shove that in. See how one wire is like just inside of the bunch of the other wire? It vectored right into itself. It's, a, it's been inserted. Loud, loud noises. We're putting in more fans. It's hot here. Uh-oh, I got a strand that was straggling. See it? Yeah. We're just gonna let that one ride though. It'll be okay. Hit it? Hang on, not yet. Got to get it just right. All right, go for it. Let's get some heat. See the solder start to go? There's the snow. It's pretty. Now I know you're thinking, why did you not just make one connection? We added this wire. That way the repair wire again would be longer than the primary wire. That way if this thing ever gets pulled on from, you know, from the other side or whatever, it will not pull on the repair wire. It'll pull on the existing harness. Now we just need to, uh, to secure this, button it up and clean it up and get rid of this nasty tape. Uh, then we can go ahead and start reconnecting everything. And uh, we'll pull our fuel trims back up and see how she runs. Okay, let's pull off this one last little piece of this loom right here. We don't need that one. That one's all, uh, well, it's junk. And I have a fresh cut new replacement piece. We're just gonna run this one down over the repair and over the harness until it meets the good loom at the main harness. And then uh, we'll be done with the section here above the transmission. I know there's a nice easy way to do this with a 10 millimeter wrench or something. Uh, I don't have that skill. And I've decided that today is just not gonna be the day that I develop it. Cause I, I already know how to do it the uh, old school way. And I'm, that's just how it's gonna be. Push the rest of that back in, roll it around. Good to go. Wire is repaired, connected, secured, and protected. Yeah, does this go, where'd this one go? Down? Right over that harness. Hanging did, right did it go over, over or under? Oh, I feel like I should go under. Well, that's how I got it. Mm, I feel like it goes under. Well, if it went under, I'm not going to be sandwiching it against the tree. Yeah, let's go over. Yeah, that's fine. That works for me. There we go. 
How's this Something's one? obviously not connected. This you know what? We're going to redo this one too. I don't like that. What's that connect to? The oh, other? that's the other oxygen sensor. Can you get in there with that trim tool and pop that thing out from your angle? There you go. Yeah, there's no way we can just leave this one here because it's going to do the exact same thing. Let's pull that guy off. Come here. There. Yeah, this is mostly tape anyway. Yeah, all the all the wire loom's gone. This is just tape. That's all that's left. That's silly. Not gonna work. Wrong pliers. Where's the red ones? Oh, they're right in front of me. Silly Ray. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Junk. That feels okay. We'll leave that there. Uh, okay, got another piece cut. Let's uh, let's slip this thing over and protect this other circuit. Oh, come on now. How do you do this, Aaron? Do you do it differently? No. You don't use the... Uh, There's a tic-tac thing where somebody puts like a wrench on it. You stick the wrench on it, yeah. That's if you're running a new room. Like you got to have the ends of the circuit open to do that. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't bother with it. Negative. This way works just fine for me, and I'm sure it's easier some other way. But I've been doing it like this since I've been doing it like this, and that's how it is. There we go. That's protected. So now we need to clip that back in where it came from and I'll give this back to you reconnect to that where you found it and we're good here all righty shot back powering on begin suctioning yeah we need to save this thank you Get all that nasty out of there. Beautiful. That can go right back there where it belongs. All right, I think we're all set. Let's uh, let's toss this intake back on. Maybe oh, give these. Uh, uh oh, what was it? Foss's DOS. That's an O-ring. Where's that go? Good question. And how did it get there? It looks like a like a barometric pressure sensor O-ring. It didn't come out of there. I'll wipe it down. There we go. Okay, we've got the intake manifold. It is ready to go back in. Gaskets are in place, bolts are in place. Wait, we forgot to show them. The wire. Oh, no, 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 they saw it. I showed them the wire. I showed them the wire. Time for the re. Here, let me hang on to that for me. Let me come around over here through this hole and then we'll just set it in there together. Down. Right there, watch the, uh, the harness in the back. IMRC is connected. Intake manifold right runner control. Right there. And then there's another and then, one. Is there another one on that? On the belly side of this harness. Oh yeah, I got that one. Alright, good to go. One, two, three, four, five, ten. Ten millimeters. And that thing will be secure. Alright, ten mil is coming in. That was some rapid wobble. I almost lost that one. I like to get the inboard ones first and then we'll crisscross. There's only two inboards. Get the outboards next. Oh, out of sequence! Fired. Click. Hey, what's the torque spec on these, Aaron? Another ugly dug with that trigger finger. Am I not nice. ugged? Did I not ugly enough? I'd give it a double wrap. I'm doing a, I'm preloading it. That's, that's what I'm doing. Fun. That'll work. Yeah. It's all getting preloaded. And that last one. Oh, I got that one blind. You guys see that? Didn't even, didn't even look for it. All right, one more Duga. There we go. 
Click. That one was good. That one's good. Still good. Still good. Pick it up the pace. Two handed. That one. That one was loose. And can I get that one twice? Booyah. All right, intake is secure. Let's go fetch the fuel rail, get the injectors and the rail back on. Hey Rod's way ahead of us. I got this side. That was nice. Windshield wipers. Ooh. <laughs> Let me see my um, bolt there, I'll get this side. Windshield wipers. It's on the wipers? Yep. Na, 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 na. Where are you? Oh, got him. See it. Hmm. Can't find the threads. There you go. That's for your side. Yeah. Connect doors. Coils are connected. That's all tight. Good to go right here. We need to get the brake booster vacuum line on and the intake and we're uh we're good to restart this unit. Put that on. There's one. Ouch. Evac. Where is the PCV hose? PCV hose. Hey Rod's got this one coming in. I'll do the other side. Teamwork. Oh, I thought that was going to the air. Oh, nope. Uh, hang on. Ah, uh, you do it. You put it on there. <laughs> that one first. Do that one first. Double click. All right. Brake booster vacuum hose going in. On. We've got on. It's going in and on. We've already got the one for the fuel pressure sensor. Fuel rail pressure sensor. That one's on there. Is that a pressure sensor or a regulator? FRP. FR fuel rail, rail pressure. Yeah. No, it's fuel rail kilopascals. FRKPA. That's not what the PID says. Intake's coming in. Das is good. One more PCV hose. There we go. 8 millis. Uh, I have the 8 millis. Trigger control. Uh oh. I'm a little limp wristed on the left. That's not good. I need to do more left handed work to uh, develop my left handed skills here. Flickages. All right, engine reassembled. Uh, we need to plug in that O2 sensor oh, from yeah. down below. Yeah, we're not done yet. Almost, we got ahead of ourselves on that one. All right, Mustang, moving back up one more time with that subscribe button. Here we go. All right, back down below. All we need to do is find that little green. Yo, you do it. You were already up there. I'm not going to. I'm making hair. I do this one. The little green connector is the harness side. Right there is the sensor side. And we need to make those meet each other. You gonna hold that light for you? Uh, I think we'll see. Ah, oh, it's in my face. There was falling debris. They got me. Can you get it? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I know what we need. I remember what happened last time I did this. Don't go anywhere. We need some tools from the box of tools. I've choose na 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 the ones I want are not here. These will do. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna come up here on this side and grab a hold of the green connector. No, I'm not. I don't have space for that either. Can you put that connector inside of my pliers? Hold it. All right, I got it. I have the connector in the pliers. Hold it, sweetheart. This is so Ford-like. This is so sus. It is very sus, no cap. Ah, push, push. Don't, can't do that. Push. I'm pushing. I'm pulling. Can't get it. Really? All right, let, go, let me uh, see if I can it. Just reach, get a hold of it, and palm it together. Yeah. You see your light. See your light. Ah, debris. 
I heard it. I heard it click. Got her? Yep. Beautiful. All right, coming out. Let's let her down, fire up IDS, and uh, see what that uh, long terms do. Yep, back into the cabin, restarting the engine. The laptop is fired up. The engine is fired up, we're good to go. Hey, we hooked the fuel line up, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's wait for uh, it to stabilize here. Let's see what these O2s are about to do. Yeah, it's an ECM still. ECM's not looking at the O2s yet. Short terms, here they come. There go. I cleared cam. Did you? Okay. Yep. What are you doing? You realize you just learning. Put it on nice and tight. Mm -hmm. Again, we're bank one, we're bank two. Look at that. Now we got past the, the first idle part. Now we now we've adjusted. Okay, so remember what we did pre-repair. We're gonna take control of RPM and we're gonna watch the O2 sensors. Remember how they uh, kind of well, bank one wasn't switching very well, and remember, long term went to about 16%, uh, adjusting 15% more. So here we go. We're gonna go to. 1200 or 2000, I think that's where we were. Right here, 1800, 19, two grand. Okay, we're watching our waves. Bank one is on top, bank two is on the bottom. Short terms look nice and tight, and then we're gonna wait for the long terms to come online, and then that's gonna here they come. This is gonna start to be our adjustment. As long as we have nice, tight, short-term fuel trim, this is what's happening right now. Right now. This is what the long-term is what the PCM has learned over this current drive cycle since we have cleared the keep alive number, we call it CAM. And that's real imperative when you do like a mass airflow sensor, when you do oxygen sensors. Um, and as you get with these newer vehicles, even when you do uh, some special sensors like cam position sensors or crank sensors, we have to um, redo what's called the misfire profile correction procedure. And that is uh, setting the PCM, the powertrain control module, at a baseline of uh, where the learned misfires are at. So uh, there's a lot of computer stuff resetting that you have to do when you do repairs. And, you know, sometimes a lot of DIY guys don't have access to that because these scan tools access a different part of memory within the computer uh, to allow us to do that. A lot of the DIY guys just have the handheld full scan uh, scan codes. So, oh, these uh, things here. Yeah, and only one. from the ECU. We got one right in here. Maybe. Ah, that guy. Yep. Talking about a code reader? Yep. That looks pretty good, man. Well, here's our telltale right here. Long terms on bank ones. On bank one. Uh, at 2,000 RPM, this was trending at like 24, 26, or oh, what's maxed out, 25, 26? It was maxed out at some point. 25, then you'll get closed loop fault. Yep. And now we're trending negative. Short terms are emulating each other and power down. Our waves are looking good. So right now, as it's running, let's just go ahead and do a KO. Key on engine running continuous memory DTC self test, and we'll see if anything's pending. Um, while this is doing this, let's go take a look at the engine, make sure we got nothing spraying, everything's good to go. You kill me, make sure nothing's spraying out of it, and it's been running over here for about four minutes. <laughs> it could be dumping fuel all over the ground. We're over there playing with the computer, that's great. Very, little, little very behind, responsible. A little behind the movie scenes. You know, one of my things. Like the rechecks, and I think you do too. See? You touch everything that you touch. We totally forgot that. Yeah, that was me. I took that off. This is my side, though. Yeah. Put that back in. I don't know. We didn't really have a side. We just kind of was like everywhere, just touch everything. Tight, tight, click, connected. The most important thing is uh, you know, the first thing in the, in the uh, diagnostic process is to verify the customer concern. And that is exactly what we did. We verified not only their concern, but 
verified it with the scan tool, and that's, uh, you know, the concern was happening right now. You guys saw it. We were, we were talking about it live right there. We did some inspections and found uh, that wiring concern, and now the post-repair uh, retest. You guys see it right now. All right, guys, we got a confirmed kill. Closing the hood. We're backing her out. Okay, hand me that scan tool, if you would, sir. Backing out the auto piece. Don't let it get away from you. This is a crowd killer. It's a, it's a stain. Beautiful. Oh, honks for safety, man. You got a, there you go. What are you doing? All right. All right, guys, there she goes. She's finding her way to a parking space. This auto is complete. It's a confirmed kill. We fixed it. The data proves it. Aaron fixed it. I couldn't find the, I couldn't find the wire. I completely brain farted on that one. So my man got it taken care of where I had failed to diagnose, which is all good. That's why teamwork is the best work. So that being said, we're going to go ahead. We're going to close this video out right now. We're going to do that, as always, by thanking each and every one of you for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let us know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, do not forget to subscribe to Power Stroke Tech Talk with A-Rod. See you Wednesday live streams. See ya. Shameless self-promotion complete. <laughs>